All right, we're just going to be going over the 30B FM uh, transmitter. Uh, before you look at the power supplies or do any type of connections, just make sure your breakers are off and uh, power's off of the uh, panel. So to start off, it's a plate transformer. Of course, the Jesus stick. Before you touch anything, just make sure you tap all connections, especially capacitors, which hold the voltage. So this particular transformer, uh, Peter Dahl Company made it for us, and the tapping's a little bit different than what uh, BE specifies in the manual. So like with any mod or special equipment, other than what the manual says, just make sure to have that added in the manual, how to tap. So uh, phase one, two, and three, or the three-phase transmitter, and the taps, uh, like specified by Peter Dahl, you'll tap for your whatever your start voltage is. In this particular transformer, they give you 240 and 208, and you go from there. So we're tapped for 220, so we tap 208, and then the second uh, jumper is going to be plus 12. So this particular transformer, one, two, three, primaries. And then the jumpers are going to go from phase one here, uh, excuse me, from here to phase two, and then phase two to phase three, and three back to one. So you just have to be real careful with uh, this because you don't want to get it wrong. All right, the bridge rectifier. Um, when, I'm in, you know, when we get the transmitters in or in the field, we just like to make sure visually everything's okay, of course. It's so a tap. If you want to tap for a smaller voltage, you could easily tap with this connector here. So right now we're tapped for roughly 10,000 volts. Over here, outside the power supply, uh, the negative goes through a coil. Um, and then next is the capacitor. Usually every, especially plate supply, has a large capacitor. And this is the power supply portion of the transmitter. So the bleeder resistors here for the high voltage. So when you turn the plates off, it slowly um, bleeds the voltage on the cap. Above it, all the way to the right, is the current limiting resistors. It's simply for safety, like with any circuit. It is uh, two 5 ohms in series to create 10 ohms of resistance in series with your voltage, your plate voltage supply. All right, the high voltage lead over to the cavity. Uh, and this particular transmitter meets right here for a safety interlock and goes up to be metered. Right after that metering, it goes through many resistors to give you the voltage for your meter. Uh, after that, uh, it goes into the cavity. It's the high voltage. Um, okay, so we have our other power supplies that you're going to have your filament, your screen, and your bias. Your bias is usually the smallest of the three that we're just talking about right now. This is the bias power supply. It's the screen. You can't see it really well from here, but that's the filament. Those all have to be tapped for the appropriate voltage. AC voltage. Right here, the manual shows you which wires are supposed to go where. Just make sure you connect that. Okay, this is the air interlock. Simply the cavity wants good air pressure. So it, air comes through the tube and runs a relay. And it's part of the interlock. Filament will not come up without good air pressure. All right, we have our exciter. Our right, starts here. And then this particular transmitter goes through a splitting and combining system into our two IPAs. So RF is split through a splitter, then input it into our IPA, 
then back into our combiner, the tube, and then out to our cabinet. And that's roughly 350 to 375 watts into the cabinet. Like with most transmitters, there's an interlock loop. This has to be jumpered. Make sure that's jumpered or the interlock light LED in the front will not come on. That's part of the circuit. Okay. So these are the uh, power connections that are coming from our power supply coming into our uh, PA cabinet. So just make sure you go with the book. The book lays that out wire by wire where each wire is supposed to go. It's easily the mistake or misplaced with wire in the wrong spot, so just double check all that. All right, these three boards are a place of error or failure. The bees especially, I replaced this particular board all the way to the right. You can uh, easily look at the schematics. They're laid out in the manual, and these are the, they run off. The input voltage is 15 volts DC from the controller, and they run uh, 120, or t excuse me, 220 volt contactors. All right, the low pass filter. Just make sure you put it together carefully, not to split any bullets. And the directional coupler at the end. Make sure you don't put it in backwards. Uh, the uh, sample ports here for the reflected and forward, they have little arrows, uh, arrows on them, usually. They show you uh, reflected and forward, or vice versa. Just make sure to uh, look at the arrows. Make sure the RG58 connectors match with the APC controller board uh, ports tell you. Make sure they're not backwards. Otherwise, the transmitter will try to come up or think there's a high vis warp. Double check all that. Okay. This is the force tuning adjustment. Um, I think it's the biggest thing that's forgotten about. A lot when we ship this, we have to push it all the way down because the uh, transmitter would be too tall for shipping. So when you install the transmitter or just checking on things, make sure this is at the right height. The transmitter will not tune, will not work without this being at the right height. All these uh, connections need to be very tight. They carry the DC and interlocks uh, from cabinet to cabinet. So make sure they're all connected and firmly in place because if they're not, it just simply will not work. All right. So there's the uh, RF cavity here. There's the tube. To uh, get to the tube or take it out, you want to first take the anode connector off, the high voltage, and take that off. And then uh, the hose clamp will have to be loosened. So simply just loosen that up a little bit. chimney will come up. You have a little uh, spot here that will hold the chimney up okay. as you go a little bit past it and turn it. Turn the chimney a little bit and the chimney will stay in place. And now you can get to the tube. Uh, the neutralization is uh, specified in the book how high these uh, should be. So you just go by the chart in the book. Take the tube out, simply lift it up, and then you can take the tube out. Put the tube in, try to push down as, as uh, straight as you can. Just make sure it's nice and firm. Put the chimney back, lift up with the chimney. Go back to the spots where you can slide it down. Make sure the chimney's all the way down.